guys welcome to time in the market the investing channel with a long-term focus it's been a while but here i am talking about the gambling industry and one of my favorite stocks in the industry is genius sports it's been one i've been buying when it was in the four to 450 range which it has kind of uh, siloed around in the last couple of weeks as the market shows weakness i will continue buying this stock I do think the gambling industry in the United States is in its infancy. It's legal in certain states, not all states, but it is certainly growing. And Genius Sports is one of the companies that will benefit from that growth without having to spend an enormous amount of money uh, like some of the gambling companies are. You know, DraftKings is a good example of this spend. If you look at their performance in the last year, it's down 72% simply because the market has kind of switched gears and it's valuing these growth companies that aren't making money at a much different level than they were a couple of months ago even as yields are going up, as some of the unknowns around the Ukraine-Russia conflict are happening, and as generally the market becomes less forgiving when you're losing money. So if you look at some of the financials of companies like DraftKings, they're burning money essentially, right? They're spending so much on marketing, so much on advertising to bring in their revenue. And while that certainly may pay off in the future, right now it means they're burning quite a bit of cash to juice up their growth to get these users on board so when they're on board they can make money in the future and the estimates you know kind of prove out that theory if they can achieve what they're trying to do they're going to grow at a decent clip they're already a pretty big player in the united states burning a lot of money expected to burn almost a billion dollars against a six billion dollar enterprise value at today's prices but if you look forward to 26 you're looking at a 10 percent cash flow yield at today's prices if they can achieve what they're trying to do. The question is, is that going to happen? There are so many companies trying to move into this space. There's FanDuel, Supergroup, uh, tons of others. I can't even name any, all of them because simply I, I don't gamble myself, but I do know that this is a lucrative business. But I like the other side of the business that we're gonna talk about, the data side. And Genius Sports is essentially in a duopoly with Sports Radar, another stock I really like, uh, in providing that data and providing some of the sports technology that these leagues and these gambling companies use to really power their um, gambling. Uh, essentially, what Genius Sports does on the betting side is they have deals with some of the professional leagues where they get, where they are the primary provider of all of the data. You know, statistics. Uh, live game data, et cetera, for leagues like the NFL. They make deals with FanDuel, they make deals with DraftKings, and they essentially take a cut of each bet for providing that data to those companies. So, like I said, this is essentially a duopoly with Sports Radar. Genius Sports has a few of the leagues, Sports Radar has a few of the other leagues. For example, Genius Sports just signed a deal, which was somewhat expensive with the NFL for a couple of years. Sports Radar has the NBA, Genius Sports has the EPL, Sports Radar has, has other leagues. Uh, and there, there are plenty of leagues to continue to sign deals with. But both of these companies do more than just the betting side. They do sports technology, sports analytics. For example, Genius Sports bought Second Spectrum, which is a company that provides analytical data to the NBA. They also do sports technology that they use in partnership with companies like CBS, Paramount, Viacom, whatever, um, to provide them things like RomoVision, you know, live up-to-date data that they can show on the screen. The Super Bowl Slime Bowl or whatever it was on Nickelodeon was a second spectrum product. They recently signed a deal with the NCEA for some of that data to be used uh, with the women's NCEA tournament. Genius Sports actually owns the NCEA data set. So anytime you're making a bet on an NCAA AA game, men's, women's, whatever, Genius Sports gets a small cut of that alongside all of their other businesses. And that's kind of why I like the business model. This is a not a winner take all business model where it's like, you know, if DraftKings and FanDuel end up being the two best ones, all of the other companies lose. Uh, that's probably not going to happen. But for Genius Sports, whoever wins, 
they win. It doesn't really matter. They have deals with FanDuel. They have deals with DraftKings. They have deals with Supergroup. They have deals with Win. They have deals with whoever else is out there. And they're making money each time you make a bet on top of the other things that they do. And they do those things pretty well in my mind. Uh, if you are thinking of investing in Genius Sports, I would totally consider looking at their investor presentation that I'll go over in a bit but they did a really good job of laying out their business model and what they do but what i like about this business is that it's very much uh, a business that's going to continue to do well as long as gambling keeps growing and i think it will in the united states uh, but they also have a mature business outside of the united states already so right now they're sort of in a transition point where they're entering the united states they're spending a lot of money to do that so they are not making money right now but I think this is a business that once that, that United States business is mature, they're going to flip the switch really quickly and make today's valuation really, really attractive from a future perspective. So we, before we go into valuations, let's look at this Investor Day presentation, which happened a couple of months ago. Uh, they announced some, some projections for 22, 23, et cetera, and also talked about their business. They do have three business segments, like I talked about, sports tech and services, betting technology, which is kind of their main business, and then media technology. They help you know leagues and TV stations kind of, and even gambling services um, with advertising and advertising technology as well. So expecting to be EBITDA positive in 22 and 23, and then highly profitable over the next three to five years. That's really where I'm looking out as, as this investment. It's got to be a three to five year window. This thing is not profitable today. It's probably not going to be profitable on paper in 22 and 23. And when I say profitable, I mean cash flow positive. That's, you know, EBITDA is kind of a funky number, stock-based compensations, whatever. Those are real costs. Those have to be included in your actual bottom line. And I don't know if they're going to be cash flow positive in 22. I would hope they would be cash flow positive in 23. But over the next few years after that, I think this is going to be a business that's going to churn out cash like nothing else. And that's really why I like it. Core business is already EBITDA profitable, cash flow profitable as well. So I'll talk about that in a second. And then the U.S. business is an area of investment with strong growth opportunity and expected EBITDA profitability in 24. Then they have an acquisition strategy. They picked up Second Spectrum, which I thought was an amazing acquisition, really loved it. Gives them a lot of technology uh, improvements. And there's a lot of opportunities with gamifying sports and making the sports presentations that we see on TV today more interactive. And they have a lot of cool, cool technology. I urge you to watch the videos that they had in this presentation that really makes that a reality for those do, who are interested in that sort of stuff. I'm talking about like, hey, if a player, if an NFL player gets a ball and you're really interested in fantasy, you can go to a feed that shows how many pan fantasy points he has above his head. And then as he gets a five yard run, that number automatically updates for you and again that's not for everybody but some people would really love that stuff and i think as you move forward in tv as a lot of these streaming deals are made you can see you know amazon's going to have like seven or eight different streaming uh shows running at one time for the same game and some of them may be using some different technology that makes it attractive to certain viewers you know if you're a fantasy fan you're going to go to a certain stream that that really delves into fantasy if you're not you're going to go to the just standard stream that's basically what you see on tv today but stuff like chromovision that is really the future of sports where you're seeing a lot of live data analytics that show up on the screen automatically without a lot of work and that's what second spectrum really does so what you're looking at here is profitability 340 million in revenue for 22 with 15 million in adjusted ebitda 430 million to 440 in 23. So pretty decent growth here at 40, 50 group adjusted EBITDA. And again, EBITDA is a question mark here. If you look at their US business, the EBITDA to cash flow translation just isn't there yet. If you look at their 2020 results, um, their actuals, right? You had, actually, I can't see it here. If you look at their cash flow for 2020, they were actually cash flow positive, right? And that's kind of how this business works. When you look at Sports Radar, which is a more mature version of Genius Sports, their EBITDA to cash flow conversion is pretty solid. It's like in that 80 to 90 percent range, which means that if you're projecting 40 million in EBITDA, you should get about 30 million in cash flow. That's not working right now for Genius Sports because they're utilizing a lot of money to invest in 
their U.S. operations. They made a pretty expensive deal, most think, with the NFL, but I think it's going to be worth it because the NFL is going to be a huge boon to their gambling uh, betting sector, rather, especially as in-play betting becomes more prominent in the United States. So right now, they're cash flow negative. The good thing is even though they burned $70 million in cash in 21, they still have 200 plus million in cash even after acquiring Second Spectrum for $200 million, simply because they went public via SPAC at the right time. Uh, they collected almost basically all of the money that they were going to get. This was before the SPAC market fell out and people started collecting money and, and the companies that went public via SPAC got like you know 3% of the cash they were thinking because of the number of redemptions. There were barely any redemptions here. Genius Sports went public at the right time in terms of getting their cash. If you bought at $10 at SPAC time, you're feeling pain right now because the stock kind of followed the chart of DraftKings, it's down 71%. Does that number look familiar? Basically the same as DraftKings. This is being thrown out with all of the other high growth, uh, low margin at the moment stocks. And I think that's wrong, in my opinion. I think this is a company that is going to do well in the future. It's just a matter of getting past this negative cash flow position that they're in right now. And I'm hopeful they can do that by 23. And if they can do that, they're going to be throwing out so much cash that at 655 enterprise value, this is going to be, a, a, in my mind, for me, a great deal. And I'm continuing to buy. If it falls back into that four to 450 range, I'm going to buy so much. It's going to be crazy, but I already have a pretty healthy position. This is probably my, my maybe at this point, because I bought a lot in the last month or so, maybe one of my biggest SPAC positions, D SPAC positions. Um, that's how much I like the company. Not without risks, obviously. Anything that can fall 71% can fall even further. If the market continues its downward trajectory, this could potentially fall into the two to three range like some other D SPACs if it's just hated that way. I think that would be a fantastic deal and I would continue buying. But again, I'm here with a long-term mindset. So as we go back to this, you know, that 80 to 90% cash flow conversion, if you look at it that way, if they can kind of stop the cash burn and get to a more mature level, which I think they're trying to get to by 23, they mentioned 24 profitability in the US, so maybe 23 won't be that, but 24 onward. If you can get 40 to 50 cash flow, you know, 40 million in cash flow by 24, that's almost 7 to 8% cash flow yield on 24 estimates. Uh, and I think from there it's going to grow really, really well that's really solid in relation to what you're getting from the market and a lot of these growth names you know a lot of these growth names have been punished and they've been punished rightly because as you look out so let's say shopify or some of these other companies you go out to 26 estimates and you're maybe getting two to three percent cash flow yield at today's prices even after they've fallen 40 to 50 percent and this is getting you potentially six to seven to eight percent cash flow yield by 24 so two years earlier and from there it's got the opportunity to grow that even further that's why i really like the business if you sort of look at their original business very profitable in terms of ebitda not sure how that translates to cash flow it's hard to tell right now if you look at their existing business it's profitable if you look at their u.s business still a very small part of the pie growing and then losing money right that's obviously what's going to happen they're going to lose money in a business that they're investing in their assumptions here are shown how much gross gaming revenue are they going to get how much of that is in play gaming and how much of that is in play as a percentage of nfl gross gaming revenue if you don't if you're not familiar with with betting in general um in play betting is essentially let's say you're in the third quarter and now the odds of the winner have changed from the start of the game and you want to make a bet that hey the kansas city chiefs are suddenly going to win even though they're down two touchdowns in the third quarter the odds are going to be pretty good that they might win that's the type of bet you make well in play betting as a percentage of handle they're estimating 25 to 30 percent it was 25 in 2021 if you look at what happens in europe in play betting can be as high as 70 percent and the good thing about this conservative estimate be it being 30 percent is that there's upside and the upside exists in the fact that genius sports takes about a percent of out of play betting so before the game betting essentially they take about a percent of each bet whereas of in play betting because they provide live data 
they can take up to 5% depending on the deals they've signed with the various sports books. So obviously there's a big difference as in-play betting becomes a bigger part of NFL handle of or NFL gross gaming revenue. Genius Sports and Sports Radar are going to make more money in the United States because right now in-play betting is less prevalent here than it is in Europe, which is why they make more money in Europe and why they make less money outside of the fact that they're investing to grow here in the United States. If in-play betting can grow beyond these estimates, these projections that they have for 22 and 23 can be lower than expected. So that would be a good thing for investors. Uh, they've had some acquisitions, Second Spectrum, which I've talked about before, FanHub, Spirable, gamifying some of this stuff. Revenue there is growing. Um, some EBITDA there as well. Again, hard to tell how that translates to cash flow. That's really the tough part about this um, investment thesis is that you've got some uncertainty around when this is going to become cash flow positive. You know, if you look at Sports Radar as a, as a comparison, this, that's a more mature company, not quite where uh, Genius isn't quite where Sports Radar is, but those guys are very much cash flow positive. They're already a four to five percent cash flow yield, depending on what price you get it at. I was actually a big buyer of Sports Radar at 1250. I will continue to be a big buyer there if it falls below that again, if there's market volatility. Love both of these companies for the same reasons. They have this data value that is intrinsic to everything around sports. You know, they get rights from the rights holders. They, they pay them something or they make a deal with the NFL to provide them some additional information or the EPL, whatever. So you can see what rights they hold here. NCA, NFL, EPL, NASCAR, FIBA, European basketball. They signed a deal recently with the CFL that basically said, hey, we're going to get a, a percentage of your CFL ventures. So they, are, they actually own some equity in the CFL now because of the deals that they're signing with some of these rights holders and helping them grow and providing some of this data and analytics and media consulting that they provide to the leagues. And they are the content aggregator for all of that data that they provide to a lot of these distribution channels, you know, for live sports data and real time odds, they provide that to DraftKings, FanDuel, all the sports books that they work with for live video streams and data driven advertising. They provide that to CBS and other channels that they will work with, you know, CBS again, using them for the women's NCAA tournament. We'll see how that looks. Then you've got all of these leagues that are relying on genius technology. Like I said, sports uh, spectrum, uh, or second spectrum rather is intrinsic to the NBA experience. If you ever look at, you know, uh, if you're familiar with the NBA, uh, Daryl Morey is somebody who uses a lot of these um, stats to essentially quantify the the usefulness of players on their team. And all of these guys are being more stats driven and more data driven. And they are using second spectrum and other leagues eventually will start using data like this. And again, Genius isn't the only one that provides this stuff. Sports Raider is there as well, but those two are competing on their own. So some will take half the leagues, uh, the other will take the other half of the leagues and they'll work within that structure relatively well. I don't think this is a one company wins all type deal. This is a an ecosystem that both companies can exist in and both companies can do well in. And again, sports books rely on that data. That data is needed. They can't really function without it. They can get it on the secondary market. Like if the if Genius Sports makes a deal with the NFL, which they did, they have all of this live data. Uh, they are the only ones that have the ability to provide live data. But for secondary data that's not live, if you're not using in-play betting, yeah, they can probably get it from somebody else. But in general, most of these companies sign deals with the company that has the actual deal with the rights holders. So you'll see a lot of news that, hey, Genius Sports signed a deal with Bet365, Genius Sports signed a deal with Bet MGM, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And each time somebody makes a bet on that platform, Genius Sports is somehow getting a little bit of that money, right? So there's a lot of leagues, tons of leagues that you don't even know about, right? They have the ATP, March Madness, NFL, but also all of these other smaller leagues. They recently signed a deal with the Icelandic Football League. Sure, it's a thing. Somebody's going to bet on that. The Football League is going to utilize their marketing data, their media and analytics, their sports analytics. Somehow Genius Sports is going to make money out of that, that deal that they've signed. And 
in a lot of ways, sometimes they don't even pay, pay any money for those deals, right? They're essentially either paying them a small cost or they're passing through some of the costs. Some of these tier one deals are expensive. So for example, when they signed a deal with the NFL, they gave away a bunch of equity. So if you look at their earnings for 2021, they look very, very negative because there is a ton of NFL equity given up within the earnings. Now that doesn't necessarily hurt the cash flow statement, but it does dilute the current shareholders. And they are somewhat, <laughs> somewhat dependent on some of these bigger leagues. That's the only negative with some of these companies. The risk that I see here is that, hey, they signed a deal with the NFL for four or five years, whatever it was, they gave a bunch of equity. Now the NFL has ownership interest. What happens if that changes? Let's say the NFL just wants to go back to Sports Radar because Sports Radar had the NFL before. What if the NFL wants to bring some of this data in-house? What happens then? The NFL is a huge league. Yes, they have equity with Genius Sports. So that kind of becomes worthless if they bring a lot of this data in-house and make the Genius stock worth less. But it's possible that it happens. The NFL certainly has the ability to do that. What if the NFL just buys out Genius Sports or buys out the arm of Genius Sports that manages the NFL uh, data? It's also possible. You know, the NFL could certainly make a lot of money by selling their data directly to the sports books. Would that be deemed illegal? Um, who knows? But there are some risks with the data that they're dependent on, especially some of these tier one leagues, which bring in the majority of the money. Even though they're a small percentage of the events, the NFL is probably a pretty decent percentage of their overall revenue, especially as it grows in the United States, as betting grows in the United States. Um, so again, 20, 250 league partners that they have contracts with through 24 and beyond. Some risk there with what happens when those contracts go up for negotiations. Are they going to get better? Are they going to get worse? Churn is historically near zero, so that's always a good thing. We're talking about some of their technology here. You can go into the, the presentation here and see. They are poised for near, medium, and long-term growth. I agree with that. I think their sports technology and services uh, area is very interesting. Augmented video, RomoVision, live insights. You can kind of see what's the percentage that this is going to go in. 73%, a lot of cool stuff. NBA Jam type graphics, etc. They've used that in some uh, games already. A lot of tracking, you know, hey, a lot of data that's automatically included in the broadcast that the company is doing very very cool stuff you can watch some of these videos um, they are really a supplier of some of the infrastructure for the world of sports whether it's betting whether it's coaching tools whether it's data collection streaming sports management whatever really interesting business model uh, a lot of good stuff here and i think not going to go into too much detail here. I'd want you to look at this if you're an investor. Certainly talk to a qualified financial advisor if you're making any investments here. But I really like what they're doing here. I really like the three businesses that they're developing. It's not just a betting space play, but it's also a play on the expansion of sports in general. And if you look at some of the TV deals that are happening, sports are becoming more and more valuable. Companies are paying more and more money for streaming rights. And certainly as the sports become more valuable, the companies that provide the data that the sports depend on will see some increase in value as well. If they can charge more for some of this data, if they can improve their margins, if they can grow their revenue at a decent clip, this is going to be a good return from today's prices. The valuation has come down quite a lot and at today's prices, I think this is a really, really, really intriguing play. And you can kind of see some of the stuff we're talking about in play versus out of play, how much revenue are Genie taking in. So if you had an emerging market that has a 15% in play, anytime there's a million dollars in betting, Genius Sports takes about $1,000 in revenue because they take a 1.5% take rate out of all of the wins. And then a 5% take rate from the in-play versus a 1.5% take rate from the pre-match. So in a mature market, 
that can be as high as 50, 50, even higher in certain markets. I mean, 70% that almost triples their revenue with no incremental expense because more people are doing the in-play betting where they get a 5% take rate versus a 1.5% take rate. So right now they're sort of assuming a relatively immature market based on what they're seeing in the NFL. If this continues growing, it has the potential to double easily as you move into a mature betting market their revenue could triple with no actual incremental expenses on the betting side of things. If you look at what happened in the NFL, in-play betting is only 13%. They're expecting it to go to 20% by 2024. But if it goes higher, then they're getting a lot more money out of that, right? And in-play win average, much lower in the NFL than the mature market. So there's a lot more potential for growth um, based on the assumptions that they're showing. You know, if they can see more in-play betting as the market matures, this could potentially grow a lot faster than they're projecting, right? And they also have an illustrative share here of, hey, how much are we actually making? Um, because a lot, of these, a lot of these shares are based not only on gross gaming revenue, but some of them are, are based on net gaming revenue. However, you know, a lot of their contracts are designed in such a way that, you know, in the United States, a lot of the money right now is used on promos. So even though they're collecting $100 in revenue, really there's a net gross revenue of $10 for DraftKings because they pay, in ta they pay a ton in taxes, a ton in promos. Well, most of the contracts that Genius Sports has are capped for those promos. So even though the companies might be collecting $10 in net gross revenue, it's not the percentage that the genie take is based off of it's more of a a 65 dollar net gross revenue because of that cap there so really interesting business model here various different share models uh in terms of their betting again a lot of a lot of underlying contracts that are probably too complicated to go into detail here and you know i probably don't even understand them that well you, nobody does because they don't really release that data you can kind of see the growth of the global sports betting space and how it continues to grow it's at 42 billion right now it's going to be well over three times that by 2030 and genius sports is partnering with with a lot of these sports book worldwide a lot has deals with 250 plus sports leagues hopefully that continues into 2030 uh, and if that does they take a cut of every dollar that's bet out there for all of the leagues that they're participating with and if you expect the global betting space to grow if you expect the united states betting space to grow this in my mind is the investment to make because they are not spending billions of dollars on marketing every single year to try to get new users they are benefiting from that marketing. And yeah, they're net cash flow negative right now because they're making investments in some of their technology and in some of the contracts that they're getting, especially the NFL contract. But as you look forward to the future, you sort of look at the estimates they're getting here. And again, these are projections. 2022, I'm not seeing cash flow positivity here either. Don't know if it's going to happen in 23. So possibly they're going to burn cash flow for a year or two certainly have enough money to, to stand by and do that. You know, they're not burning $500 million like DraftKings. They're burning 20 to $30 million maybe next year, or maybe even less depending on this. But by 2024, you're talking about a $65 million cash flow against a $600 million enterprise value right now. And that kind of falls in line with, you know, 60% EBITDA conversion here. Their EBITDA by 25 if they can really hit these numbers, they are saying that we're going to be immensely profitable going forward. 230 million in EBITDA, even if you have a third, you know, a 60% conversion rate, not the 80% that you're getting from Sports Radar, you're talking about what 120, 130 million dollars in cash flow by 25 against this. That's 20% cash flow yield. That's why I like this stock, because I think this is realistic. I think this can really throw off a ton, ton of cash flow once it's mature, once the United States gambling space is mature, because there's a mirror for it, right? You've got this $600 million enterprise value company that's growing, and then you have this other one that even though it's down 65%, 
or 42% in the last half year since this, since it went public because it went public at a $28 or $27 IPO. This is at $4 billion and doing what Genius Sports is going to do a couple of years from now, right? $600 million revenue, throwing off $150, $140 million in cash. Am I... Would I be amazed if Genius Sports can do this a couple of years from now? No. Would I be amazed if Genius Sports is valued at 3 to $4 billion a couple of years from now? No. And that's why I like the stock at today's prices, because there is a comparable to it that is already where Genius Sports is going to be a couple of years from now. Um, it's thrown off cash flow. The valuation here is at 5x revenue because it is cash flow positive it's got a three to four percent cash flow yield if you look at genius sports right now it's valued at basically 2x forward revenues simply because there's no cash flow today but once that cash flow starts happening and i think that could be as soon as two to three years from now this is going to do really well it's just a matter of waiting out this time frame and seeing what happens i don't think this is going to be an overnight success story because i do think they have to show that they're able to do what sports radar is already doing. But once they do that, I think this is going to be a great compounder on a go forward basis. Because once this starts throwing off cash flow, I think this is an interesting management team that has done things very well right now. I think the second Spectrum acquisition was absolutely fantastic. I love what it did for the business. Um, that was the sort of move that that really clarified for me that this was a company that knew where it wanted to go. It wanted to be in multiple areas of the sports sector. And because the sports sector is growing and is going to continue to boom, people are not going to stop wanting to watch sports. I think Genius Sports is going to do well because they're going to be integrated in a variety of those areas. Media properties, advertising, betting, sports books, sports technology, sports vis visualization, sports data analytics. And if they can provide that to all these leagues, and the CFL partnership is a, is a perfect sign of that. The CFL CFL was giving, willing to give up some equity in their own CFL Media Ventures business in order to get Genius Sports in there to help them monetize the league and expand it beyond what it currently is. And if they can do that and they can show that they can make these leagues more than they currently are via the use of their technology, other leagues will come calling and really help them use their technology. And it's not just that, it's the integrity of sports. That guy who just got banned in the NFL for um, betting on a, on a game while he was out injured in Florida, Genius Sports told the NFL that this happened. And Sports Radar does the same thing. They monitor all these betting activities. The leagues depend on that to make sure that their games have as much integrity as possible. And I think this is really an interesting business model. When I look at gambling, while there's certainly upside in companies like DraftKings, there's a lot more risk there because those companies have to continue to spend so much money on advertising that cash flow positivity there is, in my mind, five to six to seven years away. And until that happens, it's going to be hard to make a lot of money from something like that unless the market swings back to, hey, we're just valuing growth above all else. In a market like today, these companies aren't going to do well. And Genius Sports is probably not going to do well in the next year or two until they start showing that they can produce reliable cash flows. But when, <laughs> by the time that happens, you might not be able to get it for 600 million in enterprise value, right? That's the, that's the concern here. So I'm a buyer at this level. Again, this is just a personal video, personal advice. I'm not a qualified financial advisor. Please do your own due diligence and talk to a qualified financial advisor, but I, I'm a big fan of Genius Sports, big fan of what they're doing, big fan of this valuation. If you look at a lot of these D-SPAC companies, if you were a buyer at 10 bucks, you got burned on the majority of them. That's unfortunate. I certainly got burned on some. I won on a bunch of others, but Genius Sports is not one that I bought initially. But now that it hit this, this price point, I am very interested in it, and I've been buying quite a lot of it. And this is one that I'm going to hold for years and years and years and wait for the thesis to play out. Because again, this is always a long-term thesis. For me, all of these investments have a long-term thesis. I am not expecting this thing to jump to $7 by next week so I can get out. I will not be 
super upset if it drops to three dollars next month because the market's tanking more due to raises rates being raised or something happening in the world that blows because everything in the world blows right now if that happens i'm just going to buy more of it because sports are going to keep happening people are going to keep betting these guys are going to do well i think they are potentially able to grow faster than they've said based on the deals they've been signing so i expect 22 to be successful i expect 23 to be successful at least in terms of revenue i'm not worried about the revenue that they've projected um pretty comfortable with those projections in terms of what I've seen from this company and what I'm seeing going forward and the deals they've continued to sign. I think their sports tech and visualization is going to become more and more commonplace in the next couple of years and that it's going to make the money on top of the growth in betting in the United States, especially with the New York market opening up and larger markets opening up and doing really well because Genius Sports is getting a tiny cut of that. Every time you make a bet, there's a tiny cut of that coming to Genius Sports. The NFL just ended, but hey, the NCA tournament is coming and other sports are coming. The English Premier League is happening and they are making a cut of all these bets and continue to sign deals. And with all of these sports books and all these sports uh, leagues and, and groups and companies, and I think this is a business that can continue to grow at a solid clip going forward and is valued as if it's going to go out of business in two years and i thought i don't think they're going to need to raise money by issuing stocks which is always a concern with some of these low priced d spacs these guys have a good balance sheet they collected all that money from that spec process and they're going to do well with that especially once they start producing cash yes there's been some dilution with the nfl deal yes the nfl deal was somewhat expensive but i think it's going to be worth it in the long run because the nfl is the biggest league in the world and to have genius to have it as sports betting grows in the United States I think that's a good thing and I think this is an interesting interesting investment that I plan to hold for years to come and will continue accumulating at this price and even more so as it if it drops below 450 again so thanks for watching let me go know what you guys think about genius sports I am long genius sports I am long sports radar not long any of the other companies I talked about in this video, but maybe long those in the future. As always, please remember to talk to a qualified financial advisor, do your own due diligence, all of that good stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day. And let me know if you guys want to hear about any other stocks. Thanks.